Good evening, everybody. We'll just begin in a while. Just give me a couple of seconds. Yes. Atma Namaste. Atma Namaste, guys. <laughs> Let's begin with a short prayer. Just close your eyes, connect onto your palate. Atma Namaste, everyone. Oh, I forgot, don't I? Go live. Feel yourself in the presence of God and the teacher. Inhale and exhale, relax the body. To the Supreme Being, the Divine Father, Divine Mother, to our beloved and respected teacher, Grand Master Chokok Sui, to Lord Maha Guruji Meiling, to Buddha Kwanian, Buddha Sakyamuni, Gautama Buddha, to Lord Christ, Lord Yehoshua Ba Miriam, to Lord Shiva, Lord Ganesha, to all the great teachers, great masters of theosophy, the great beings of knowledge, light, and power, to all the angels and beings of communication and our respective Wi Fi's, we humbly invoke for your great, great blessings, for your divine guidance, for your light for your knowledge, for your wisdom and understanding, for a clearer and deeper understanding of these priceless teachings being imparted to us today. Help us to assimilate this knowledge, align it with the teachings of Grand Master Chua, so we may become better instruments in his service. With thanks and in full faith, so be it. We thank you with gratitude, with respect and love. Feel the energy coming into you. Just inhale and exhale. You may slowly open your eyes with a smile. Atma Namaste. Atma Namaste, guys. So we move on to, um, we're still in chapter three. We're looking at uh, chapter three, right? Yeah. Okay. So we're going to look at the uh, four centers. That's where we are. We stopped at an interesting point and I was supposed to actually ask you to think about it before we came and then I completely forgot with all the conversations we had, right? And so um, the question that I wanted to ask you was basically, it says here, it appears that there is no connection between the development of the chakras, yes, the etheric chakras and moral qualities. They say that these two developments are quite distinct. Do you believe this to be true or do you have a different viewpoint? Especially your Hatik Yogis there. Yeah, I've not muted you, so you can actually speak, I think. One second. Anybody has a viewpoint? Can I do that? Well, the development of our uh, character uh, definitely modifies the composition and the way the chakra behaves. This we have uh, seen quite uh, vividly, actually. So yes, uh, this is contradictory to what we have studied. All right. So the question was, um, does the chakra size actually change with the way we work on ourselves, basically with moral qualities we start to develop? So um, according to uh, Sri Ram Ramdas, he says, no, that's actually different. It's actually the, uh, the opposite of what we understand in Arhatic Yoga. Thank you, Sri Ram. Anybody else? Yes, okay. All right, so that's yes from uh, Manish, uh, from uh, Refga, Ekta, Suparna. Yes, uh, Amita and Shruti and Deepa. Yes. So uh, you've got to remember that this was written of a long time ago. Thank you, everybody, for your contribution there. <laughs> Appreciate it. Just want to see to it that we're all listening and we understand what we're doing here. So uh, though it's mentioned here that there is no, no uh, impact of what we call the change in our virtues, the way we work on ourselves compared to our chakras, we understand and we recognize that when we become more loving and kind, for example, our heart chakra actually becomes bigger, sometimes bigger than the other chakras. Uh, and we mentioned this even in, in the last session when we spoke about a uh, martial artist where his navel might be bigger, um, a singer whose throat might be bigger than other chakras. So that's not just with qualities that we might have in those respective uh, chakras, but also virtues. Yes, yeah? so when we develop uh, honesty, 
then the throat actually becomes stronger and bigger as well. Yes. So just a reminder that though it's mentioned here, um, maybe at that point they weren't aware of it, but we truly know with scanning, with pranic healing and Arhatic yoga, that uh, character building, as we call it, or the development of the virtues do influence and affect our respective uh, chakras. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so we're going to go to the next paragraph, which talks about uh, the astral body, and they talk about astral chakras as well. Yes, so we know that we have chakras or energy centers in the energy body, but here it also talks about the astral body also having astral chakrams or astral chakras. So let's just look at that. So it says the astral body, uh, sorry, let me just uh, mute everybody. Yeah, okay, thank you. So it says that the astral body an astral set center corresponds to each of the etheric centers, yet as the astral center is a vertex, but this is in four dimension, whereas the etheric chakra that you and I refer to is only in three dimension. So there is a fourth dimension in the astral body and definitely obviously in the astral chakra as well. And so it says, it is quite different from that of the etheric, yes, um, however, it doesn't mean that the astral chakra is always directly corresponding to the etheric chakra. They, their boundaries are not the same. Yes. And so it does mention here that only some part of it is probably in line with the etheric chakra. So if you're saying, if you're talking about the etheric throat chakra, the etheric astral chakra doesn't have to necessarily be directly in front of it or directly in its path. Uh, it, it's more or less what we, you and I would call somewhere in that area. Because when we talk about uh, two dimensions, for example, when we draw a box, there is no cube. Yes, it's just uh, length and breadth. But we realize when there's three dimension, there is, there is that extra dimension that comes in, which changes the whole shape of what we call a square. Now, what is a square in a four dimension? No idea. <laughs> I can't even fathom what that might be like. So anyway, the astral chakra is uh, four-dimensional. And so uh, they continue to talk about, they say that uh, with the et etheric center are always on the surface of the etheric body. That's where we know it is. Yes, the astral center is in the interior of the astral body. So maybe from the fourth dimension, it looks like it's inside the astral body, whereas uh, the etheric chakra, they say, is only on the surface. Now, again, here, I'd like to bring more clarity. We realize only the face of the chakra is on the surface of the energy body, right? The stem and the root go in, all the way in towards where the central meridian or the Sushubna Nadi is. So let's understand that this actually also interpenetrates uh, the physical body actually goes through the energy body and through the physical body all the way to the central meridian that's within us yeah somewhere along the spine hope that makes uh, some bring some clarity to you um, Amit, go ahead okay um so we're here with the Understood. moral qualities right so um okay that's the memories of the brain that we were talking about yesterday and neither change in activity of the chakra um, okay, so neither the speed, let's make it easy, neither the speed of rotation nor the change in size on the etheric level are connected to virtues and, uh, and, um, and vice versa. And uh, so what he's trying to say is, on, if the etheric chakras are big, it might not have an issue, uh, it, it might not have an impact on the virtues. And if a person is very virtuous, it might not have an impact on, uh, on, on the physical level. Okay, so uh, I think Bishop Led Peter talks about this. He said that, that, that he has met uh, with people in whom uh, these centers were um, completely, really um, activated. Um, but his, um, hold on, let me just mute people. So, um, you know, he talks about uh, places where uh, he's met people where the centers are completely, really, really activated and fully um, or quite activated, but the, uh, but their moral development was quite poor. And then he's met people of high degree of spirituality, uh, and what he describes, if I remember correctly, as the noblest possible morality, 
Okay, and the centers were not yet vitalized at all. So there does not seem to be any connection between the two developments. Now there is, uh, you have to understand that Bishop Ledbetter is one of the best clairvoyants of the 20th and 21st centuries. Um, but what he's trying to say is, I think they're trying to talk about this in purely the physical sense, because in the pranikili sense, we use the, we don't, we're not aware of the astral centers, the mental centers and the higher centers. Uh, Master Chua's point of view is only practicality. And uh, you know, his idea of understanding of chakras is uh, you should just know the location and the function for you to be a good healer, which is true. But we use this uh, interchangeably. Um, so uh, we'll come to the astral centers. But uh, with regards to the virtues, it is true, it is true, uh, a portion cannot be revealed, unfortunately. It is true that um, sometimes the, the etheric chakras might be severely affected, but the person is quite developed. Um, this is uh, usually happening, uh, in my view, when uh, purification is not done on a physical level. So, for example, you have heard of saints who can perform miracles, but their bodies are quite, uh, uh, their bodies are quite, um, what is the word? The, the bodies are quite damaged. They are almost paralyzed. You know, you've heard of saints who uh, can do fantastic healings and who are highly developed. They do Shakti Pats, but their bodies are damaged. And if you look at their etheric chakras, the etheric chakras are not that vitalized. However, they are virtuous on a very high degree. They are highly developed spiritually and they can uh, perform really miracles. But um, uh, Master Choi is one of the examples uh, because this is to do with the law of nature. So if his body ate a lot of pork, he had in a proper diet, then what is happening is the, um, the etheric or the physical body and the etheric chakras were not in the best shape compared. So when you looked at that aspect, because we know people who were healing him and, but, or, or, you know, spiritually, mentally, astrally, his energy was really, really powerful. But in terms of physical and etheric purely, it, there, there was, uh, there was a big, big difference. So his physical body was uh, quite damaged and there have been many uh, teachers like that. The physical body is damaged. Uh, I think Sai Baba had cancer also. He would still, uh, uh, you know, uh, do fantastic healings and miracles. And uh, at the same time, their morality is very high. What do you think, Sumi? That, that. Um. No, it's just a, look, we have to, we cannot say, okay, this is not what we taught in pranic healing, so let's not look at it. The, the only way that I can make uh, uh, an idea, because there is a certain amount of truth to this, so there's the missing link um, to this teaching. Uh, but it's not really important in my point of view, as long as you keep proper diet. But uh, for example, if you have wrong diet, you might be practicing high arhatic, level five, level six. You eat pork it's gonna affect your etheric chakras, it's gonna affect your physical body, and it's gonna affect you, uh, 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 the development of your chakras, etherically. However, your morality is still going to be the same. And um, I, I, I'm not sure whether you would get irritated or what, but generally I've noticed this, you just, body would fall really sick, right? Um, yes, I think when your energies are becoming more and more refined, when you do have your weaknesses coming out of you, then that weakness, the manifestation of that weakness is sometimes really quick. You know, the, the lag time or, or the time for it to mature doesn't stay for uh, sometimes even a couple of hours. Uh, and not even a couple of days, it, it literally manifests sometimes really quickly. So say, for example, you know, you're going and this person is really evolved and he's going through immigration and he gets uh, annoyed for whatever reason with, with somebody or something. When he goes to the immigration, when he stands in front of the immigration officer, this is from an experience of one of my colleagues, is that the, the, um, the officer there, the immigration officer suddenly becomes aggressive with him. And he's wondering how come suddenly this person is becoming aggressive and you know difficult with me, and only after, of course, you know maybe the person also calms down, and uh, this colleague of mine also comes, 
I mean, internally starts to calm down, he realizes things start to change. So sometimes your, your manifestation of a weakness sometimes draws the weakness in other people, making it even worse. And so we have to realize that our energies, both positive and negative, can influence others and even what we want to do for the people around. Yeah. Yep, but what does that have to do with the ethric and the virtues? I was just talking about only the virtues. So uh, I'm, I'm just talking about just the etheric body that that particular emotion that he had, which is uh, which has expanded his solar plexus, then triggers in the in the immigration officer his solar plexus of anger. So like attracts like, and then that that thing just becomes even worse. So we have to be aware that the way we think, the way we feel, the way we act, does have an influence not only on our chakras but also on people around us. Okay, that's true. Okay, but we're talking about the morals versus the etheric centers, I thought, right? Not the astral versus astral. Okay, so basically, okay, so basically what, I'm trying to, what I'm trying to say, I don't want to spend any more time on this. If you look at an ordinary person, their chakras are, their, their nadis are like village roads, okay? Uh, the traffic is low. The flow of prana is low. You're looking at a person, you know, Master would give this example regularly. He'd say, if you go to a village, how's the road there? We'd say, it's not so good. It's muddy. Uh, and he says, is there a traffic jam? He said, no. He says, why not? Because, he, you know, you have only a few cars coming in every minute. Okay. Um, but then if you have that same road on a national highway in India or on a major highway in a city, there's going to be a severe traffic jam, even if there's a portion block. Why? Because the number of cars coming in per minute is high and the speed of the cars is much higher. Okay. So he says the same thing with disciples. As you evolve spiritually, if you don't do physical purification, what happens is your, your channels have to become like super highways. They're super clean. Okay. So even though you're developing spiritually, that is the software side, you're developing your morals, you're developing everything. Yes, your chakras become big, but what what we call chakras is a integration of several types of chakras. <laughs> All right. Here he's talking only etheric. It's only etheric. From an etheric point of view, you might be evolving very fast, but if you eat pork, it's like the law of nature. The law of nature doesn't care whether you're a saint, you're a bad guy or a good guy. You jump out of this window, you're going to fall down. So you might be a good guy, but you eat pork. This is the law of nature. It will, it will start to dirty the nadis and then you have a super highway network, big chakras, energy flowing in, it's going to affect your body. Sure. So, so, so there is a correlation over there and I'll just stop at that and move into the <laughs> astral chakras that they're talking about. Let me see if I put that there. Sorry, I, I'm, yeah. I was out so I didn't understand what you were saying. Uh, I got okay. it now. So basically, um, I agree with that because uh, when it's not just pork or certain things that uh, are mentioned in the holy books, all these things are mentioned in various holy books that you should not be consuming it, whether it's a type of fish, whether it's a kind of meat. But sometimes it can even happen with just food that you get from outside. Yes, you go to a hotel and it might be a vegetarian hotel, but the, the, the energy of the food is not clean enough. Not because <laughs> it has meat in it or egg in it or whatever, but just the energy is not clean enough. And so when you consume it, and if you are more sensitive to the energy, then you'll notice you have an upset stomach. Yes, you'll be running to the toilet. So obviously that, that affects not just the physical uh, intestines, but also the chakra, the navel chakra and the solar plexus chakra. And uh, till it is cleansed and purified, you will, you will have to continue to release it, the waste matter out till all your nadis and your energy in that area normalizes. Yeah. So if you actually looked at uh, certain uh, saints, uh, if you look at their uh, etheric chakras, uh, just etheric and physical body, it's some of them, they're quite weak, especially the ones who are not uh, done the pure physical purification because they do not know. Uh, we know because Master Chua... <laughs> had to learn the hard way so that's why we know uh and that is one of the reasons that some of the masters die at like 40 or 45 even qigong masters and they have high high degree of morality but of course their etheric chakras get damaged all right yeah, now uh you have et so this thing you have etheric chakras and interpenetrating that you have um uh astral chakra okay the way I i'm not sure about this but my experience, my personal experience and the way I've sensed it and seen it is you have these etheric chakras 
And interpenetrating that, it's almost like it's falling into the gaps of your etheric chakras, all right? Uh, because the etheric, and the, sorry, the astral energy is much more subtle than the etheric energy. And just sliding into the gaps, you have the astral chakra, all right? And between the astral and the etheric chakra, you have a web, the chakra web. That's my sensing, all right? And this avoids you from seeing things on an emotional plane. Now, when you're scanning in psychotherapy, those of you done psychotherapy, Master Chua is not going to teach all this. Otherwise, the class is going to become very, very confusing, provided I'm right. So when you just scan, even though you're scanning the chakra, you're scanning it and you say stress energy, you feel the emotion energy, you feel anger, you feel everything, just like you're scanning the etheric because it is interpenetrating. But, but, what the book's saying is, um, all right, what the book is saying is, um, that it's not really, what is the word used? This word. Um, I don't know even how to pronounce it, but I know what it means. Um, it says, by no means always coterminous um, with the corresponding, but always coincidental. So what they're trying to say is, and that's how I sense it, the, the, it's not really coterminous, means basically the same size. So the astral center is filled with stress energy, it's much bigger than the etheric. And that's why a person is more emotional or a person, even the mental chakras, some, some of them are much bigger, much smaller. So that decides how a person is more emotional or mental, how, how, who is in control. So basically you have, it's not always the same size, but it's always coincidental. Uh, that means that it's always in the same region. All right. If you look up the word coincidental, I think that's what coincidental means as far as Same I, boundaries. Same boundaries. Similar boundaries. No, similar boundaries. It's a boundary. No, that... It's not following actually the similar boundary lines, but it's following the similar location, <laughs> all right? Uh, because the uh, boundary might be extended because the astral might be much bigger than the etheric, all right, in, the, in that point of view. Um, so that's how I sense it. Um, and you do have astral and uh, we won't talk more about it because it's not part of the book. We'll see how the author progresses with it, all right? And uh, the last thing it says is this, each chakra has one of the seven varieties of the color prana present. Right? And you said something before that as well? Yeah. The four dimension. Yeah, the four dimension. Oh, okay, we'll come to that when we talk about the, the other part. All right. Uh, four dimension also is, I think, where the spirali comes from, from the vitality, if you remember. I think it's in chapter two. Anyway, so um, now this part about one chakra, one color, one color, where is it? Yeah. One color is always greatly predominant. When one color is greatly predominant, it does not mean that it's only one colored chakra because in many books, they say the basic is red, the sex chakra is orange, the navel is yellow. That's not correct. And even in this book, they don't look at it as one color as far as I know. Uh, you know, for example, you look at these three chakras, basic, sex, and the navel. Um, these three chakras contain red, orange, and a little, little yellow, not much, just a little. All right, and after then you have the throat, which is green and blue. Um, so um, always remember that the chakras are not single uh, color; they are multicolored and multidimensional. That's what Master Cho would always say. As at least that's what I remember. So you can go on with it. All right. Now this uh, part that we're going to talk about is with reference to my perspective and Amit's perspective. So this is not necessarily. Uh, probably the whole truth. It's not maybe also uh, what the uh, person who's written this portion is talking about. Remember, all that we are reading in this book is a compilation of different authors' teachings. And it's not just Arthur Powell. Arthur Powell does mention that these are all compilations that he's put together to make it easier for us to understand. And so, um, as he said, he says that uh, we understand that there are seven varieties of prana. And then in each chakra, all of them are there, but one is a bit more predominant. And maybe the predominant one is what he was referring to. Some books just give you the name of just the predominant color, but does not give you the whole truth. Uh, it's just one layer of the truth. But, not mentioning that there are others. Yeah, but you have to keep in mind that all the chakras don't have all the colors. Correct. So if you go back to Master Cho's books, and for example, the basic has just red, orange, and a little bit of yellow, right? And so if you go back into Master Cho's book, there, there is the reference of the colors. And if you look at uh, spiritual essence of man, you'll notice that there is the picture of the chakra moving at its normal speed. And then when it slows down, how many colors are actually visible? 
right? So that, that's actually a lot of work which they put together. Now let's go ahead. So they say that, well, how does this prana actually come into the chakra? So they, the, they say that the prana that comes in, yes, remember we're talking about that prana which, which has that uh, single atom and then it, it collects around it the six, right? How does that come in? So we're talking about uh, the prana that rushes in. There's, a, there's that prana and there's this other prana that I'm going to talk about. So the prana that rushes in from the center of each chakra, yes, at a direction that is 90, at a 90 degree angle or a right angle to the plane of that chakra. However, because it comes from the astral level, they say it almost looks like it's welling up right rather it's it's kind of opening and coming out of the center uh from the from the center of the um uh, of the chakra from the astral plane yes coming from the astral plane into the etheric plane and from the center of the chakra the force then radiates again in in right angles that's 90 degrees in different directions outwards and therefore divides the chakra into what we call uh, spokes or petals or uh, or wheels right the the spokes of the wheel so that's basically what happens now my understanding looking at the image that is there in your uh, if you have this image you can see it i know it's going to be very small uh, if you don't mind maybe i'll i just stop the sharing for now so yeah so if you look at this um, this is the one that we have, right? The image. So for me, the, that force that is coming to the center is coming from the astral level into the etheric. So it's coming from the astral. And remember, the astral is not just outside, but it's also inside our physical body. Just like the energy body is not just outside, but also inside the physical body. For me, the astral is also outside and inside. And so you have the, say, the chakra. And so you have the energy chakra, yes, which we call the energy center. And then you have the astral also there. So I, for me, my understanding, I could be wrong as well. It's, it's coming from inside, right? The fourth dimension, which I cannot understand. So for me, so, somewhere there, it's like somewhere from inside the astral body, penetrating through the etheric body, coming towards the center of your chakra. And then it swells up, right? And as it comes, then not only does it swell up there, then it then moves in different directions, creating what we were talking about earlier, those, um, those spokes, right? And so you can see the spoke. Okay, so you can see the, the, the spokes and depending on how many are required, then it goes at right angles into that chakra. And so it does mention here, it says that the number, yes, of these straight lines, these right angles that are created, the number of directions which are similar to the spokes of a wheel, Yes, that is why we call them chakras. The spokes are divided, therefore, the spokes are divided, divide the chakra into a number of segments, like petals of a flower. Hence, in some Hindu books, it's also referred to as a flower. So the number of petals that we have, starting with the basic chakra that just has four petals, is got to do with the swelling of energy that comes from within, from the astral through the etheric, and then splits. And then it splits depending on the number of uh, spokes that that chakra is supposed to have. And it's always going to remain only that. It doesn't increase, it doesn't decrease. Yes? So that's my understanding of this. Uh, we'll go to Amit and then come back. Okay. Just to clarify what Simi says, she said it has to do with the atom with the six things. It's not that. That's the vitality globule. I don't... Uh, no, no. I said that is one prana we were talking about. This is another prana we were talking about. That's not the force you're talking about. Right? No, no, no. All right. So I want to ask you one thing. Um, let me just, uh, okay. When you have uh, a force coming in, you have to understand why in the first place does the uh, chakra, why is the chakra round? <laughs> All right. And how does it stay round? It's made of energy, right? Um, you see, this chapter is not to do with any particular chakra. What the author is trying to do, you have to always understand the purpose of the chapter. What the author is trying to do is to give you a clear idea about the existence of chakra, about the features of chakras, and uh, analyzing uh, what a chakra um, f functional, functionality wise, and how a chakra exists in the inner world. All right? It's not talking about absorption of energy or anything yet. It's talking about existence of the chakra. And when you're looking at the existence of the chakra, you forget about the air prana, ground prana, and everything. How does the chakra sustain itself? All right. How is the chakra around? How are the spokes developed? 
How do we know that? How does the chakra know that it needs to get six spokes instead of 1,000? And how does the spokes know where to go? Which we learn in the other chapter. Uh, chapter. If you think very carefully, and based on what Master Cho has taught us, this all design is all in your physical permanent seed. All right? Mathematical equations, everything is detailed about the size, the location, the spokes, uh, how the energy will move in and out, everything is done. Now to make the chakra stay its shape, it needs a certain force. It needs to be, it needs an integral force. And that comes from the physical permanent seed. Uh, now Master Chua doesn't use the word welling up, he says radiating outwards, right? So if you see welling up and radiating outwards is similar meaning, it's just 100 year difference of vocabulary. Okay, <laughs> but um, so the energy from the physical palm seat goes out and it goes and holds these chakras in place so that when it's spinning, it doesn't spin off. <laughs> okay, so it doesn't spin out of your body. All right, so it holds it in place, number one. Number two, it decides how that, and it gives existence to, to the energy center. All right, um, now why the astral? It could be Two reasons, I'll skip the first reason and we'll see if it comes up later on, which I'm sure it will. One of the reasons is because maybe the clairvoyant is zooming in. Because obviously it comes from God passing through the different levels, but it the pass through the astral level, then physical, then etheric, then physical, it has to pass through before coming out. So that's where it's coming out from. And it's coming from within. It comes from within. How do we know? If you look at the uh, arrows and you look at the next one, the arrow is moving this way. The arrow is moving this way, all right? Now, if you look at the Fleming's uh, right hand rule, is it the right hand thumb rule, the energy goes like this, turning this way. So the energy is coming from inside and moving this way. Aha, <laughs> you have to look at the- I can't see your hand. Okay, like right there, <laughs> <All right. laughs> So the energy is going in from here, the force is from inside, but it's difficult to show in, a, in the book. And then you notice the arrows are going this way, right? The so direction of the his direction fingers. Of the, of the direction of my fingers, okay? So, uh, so then you know that the force is coming from within. It's welling up. This is the energy of the physical permanent seed, all right? Now, just to um, go into the... So the energy goes in there, all right? The energy goes in into this part, all right? Let me go to the next page. So prana rushes into the center of each chakra. It rushes from the center. From the center, it radiates outwards. And that's the number of spokes based on the design of the seed. All right? And we need to remember that these are not physical but etheric matter. It's energy. You see, even steam, when you boil, will evaporate, will just disperse in all directions. But this maintains its shape through the design of the uh, seed combined with the life energy em emanating from the physical permanent seed, all right? This is the same reason why the chakra rotates in a certain manner in the first place, all right? So now according to Leadbeater, this energy is supposed to uh, be energy that enters this from the astral world. And it's what, what is very clear in one of the other books he clarifies and he says, this is one of the forces of God. So it cannot be just a normal force. All right? Normal prana. Normal prana, all right? Now it shows astral, but maybe like I said, it comes all the way from outside. All right. Now, this movement gives the spokes and gives the shape. And according to Master Chua, it says the same thing. The appearance of the chakra is dependent upon the speed of rotation. Okay, under normal, and we'll come to it when we go into chakras, you notice that the chakras change its shape and speed uh, depending on rotation, especially some of the chakras like the spleen, the ming min, ming min is not spoken about, but the ming min as well. That's why there's sometimes uh, confusion with the size of the spleen of people or the size of the ming min of people. Uh, is it one third, is it half? Uh, as you grow older, first of all, your speed of rotation changes and uh, your, your size changes also, all right? Just like how the blood pressure uh, is no, what is normal for a 20 year old and what is normal for a 60 year old changes, same, the Ming Min also changes that. Anyway, why are we talking about that? Um, under normal conditions, the rapid clockwise and counterclockwise rotation produces an optical effect, making the chakra look like a lotus flower with many uh, pointed petals. The pointed petals are optically produced by the combined motion of pranic energy moving clockwise and counterclockwise. So the force is making the chakra move this way. And due to that, and the energy comes out this way, 
So it creates this optical illusion of, of, the, of the lotus flower. But unlike the lotus flower, it's not pointed, it's more rounded, the tips, okay? Anyway, now that you know about the chakras, and this is what uh, Sumi was talking about. Here you can go into this explanation of the magnet oh, and stuff. Oh, I think okay. you're better off that. Okay, let me just talk about everything uh, that, for the rest of the chapter. So here it's talking about the spokes divide into chakram into number. Okay, so we finished that. We're going to bottom of 25. Now, now somewhat at the bar magnet is thrust in the coil of a wire set up in this. Okay, so basically they're talking about a law called the Faraday's law of, um, okay, I'll just stop sharing for some time. It talks about the Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. <laughs> if you don't know it, I'm not going to explain it. Please look it up. Okay, <laughs> so when you introduce something, it generates a current and it moves a certain way. So basically, since the force is coming in, it changes the polarization of all the, of the matter, and then it creates a secondary force. And according to the secondary force, moves uh, alternately up and down the spokes like this. So one is moving like this. So you can imagine like a two fish, but it's not fish, but two particles of light moving like this. Like so an in infinity sign. So like an infinity sign. So he's looking at it like a, like a basket, all right, uh, in, in that day. Um, anyway, um, and then what else? The secondary and force. each uh, secondary force uh, sweeping around the chakram has its own characteristics, uh, wavelength, uh, additional move, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and the wavelength, the wavelengths are very minute uh, and probably some thousands of them, um, including one undulation, though the exact. So it basically gives a shimmering effect. When the energy moves like that and you're looking at clairvoyant, that's why he calls it like Venetian glass or something. It starts to shimmer. It starts to shimmer and shine. This is a very high degree of clairvoyancy to go through the etheric and look at the initial uh, starting force of a chakra. It requires a fantastic, fantastic clairvoyant and I cannot validate this for you because I couldn't find someone who could see that much. All right, so, and that is uh, beyond uh, our capabilities at this point. Yeah, <laughs> Because you have to understand the wavelength that you have to go, your, your clairvoyance, your spectrum of view should be really, and, and training should be really, really thorough. Um, so that's basically what it says. So we'll have to take it as temporary truth. And uh, <clears throat> the chakrams are often spoken of as corresponding to certain physical organs. Those organs, in fact, which are the nearest to them. But as already mentioned, the chakram themselves are not in the interior of the body, but on the surface of the etheric double. This we will look at in the future chapters. So we'll come to this, how it affects the physical body. We'll, and we know this already, many of you are pranic healers. Yeah, so the chakra does correspond to uh, organs that are usually close to it, right? In the physical body, if there's a chakra here, uh, and this is near the heart area, then this chakra uh, controls the physical heart, for example. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so if you look at the next part, they're just giving you the Sanskrit names for all these different chakras. So the Muladhara is what we call the basic chakra, the Manipura, now, interestingly, the Manipura is sometimes switched between solar plexus and navel. At this point, it's referring to the navel chakra. Then the Swadhisthana, uh, for me, it always reminds me of taste for some reason, <laughs> is the spleen chakra. I thought that should be the name for the navel chakra. And then you have the Anatha chakra, which Master also refers to as the heart, the uh, Visuddha, which is the throat. And then we mentioned two more, which is the Agnya chakra, which is between our eyebrows. We use the same name and the Sahasra Chakra, which is the crown chakra, also called the Brahmarantra. Yes, uh, so that it, Brahmarantra means a gateway to God or gateway to heaven. And then it's interestingly mentioning there is also eight, nine and 10, but it's never used by uh, white magicians or in white magic. And it says th this does exist and it's corresponding to what they call the lower organs. Now, this could only be my guess, um, but they say if you do know where this is and probably if you do not know how to control it, you could cause problems and it could be unfortunate for those people. And I think maybe this could be the sex chakra because it's related to the organs of uh, reproduction and the urinary bladder. Uh, the second chakra for Arhatic yogis um, would be the Meng Meng chakra, the pumping station both blood pressure, which can cause a problem for them, also controlling the kidneys. And I think maybe the third one is the solar plexus or the navel, whichever is missing, which controls the either the assimilation process or 
the elimination process, the digestive process. So let's just call it uh, the gastrointestinal system, right? So that is one system which is very crucial for both our health. And if you do not know how to do it, it could cause problems. Uh, the sex chakra, uh, if the organs are affected, then uh, whether it's reproduction, whether it's urinary uh, ailments could become worse. And of course, the Ming main, which is the blood pressure, which even today, we do not allow basic students to start off to use. Yeah, so my guess is those lower organs and those lower chakras are these three. Yeah, and for the rest, we'll move into the next chapter. We go into spleen. So I'll hand it okay. over to you. So two things I want you to observe, all right? Um, I'm not sure why, because uh, either they purposely left it out or what, but the chakra seems to be moving only in one direction. Uh, that is not the case. Uh, it's against the law of nature. If a chakra moves only in one direction and takes in, takes in, takes in, the chakra will explode. Okay, so it's like a balloon being blown into, all right, and the whole body will just explode from all the centers, energy just coming in, all right. So it's different. Is is different. Now their understanding is that it gets it gets absorbed by the chakras and it's get expelled by the health rays. I think that's their understanding based on what I've read in other books, but that is not that is the truth. But that is not a hundred percent the truth. All right, uh, um, the chakras always move. Uh, clockwise and anti-clockwise and the hints are given in the next few chapters and we'll talk about how how, how we think it is um, but it always takes in and takes out always remember that okay um, and that's why the optical illusion of the lotus flower is produced number two um, is um, Okay, you can see it. Sorry, it's just similar to breathing. You can't just only inhale. Master used to make us do this experiment where you say, okay, inhale, 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 inhale. And after something, you can't inhale anymore. You have to exhale, right? So I, I think it's, it's a similar concept. The other thing is uh, there are a few chakras missing. Uh, they're actually showing three, but there are actually four missing from our point of view. Yeah. Uh, and the reason is for safety. Uh, is for safety and again for, uh, and, uh, so that the teachings will not be misused. Because it's written there, it's not uh, used by students of white magic. Here, they're not talking about um, you know, healing in general. And of course, they had to offset uh, risk in that case. At that time, uh, man was not evolved enough to, uh, you know, to um, maybe learn these teachings. Uh, and even Master Chua, to, to that extent, even when he wanted to introduce advanced pranic healing, he thought a lot about it, uh, you know, that was colors, you know, he, he thought a lot about it and he, 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 there was a big debate within himself whether he should release it or not. Uh, because just orange can be really misused if you uh, know about the properties and how to project it and where not to. So he said, okay, with the offense, we'll provide the defense. So when advanced planning killing was given, we had uh, psychic cell defense also given. So if the teaching is misused, you have ways and means to protect yourself. Uh, now, what are missing? Number one, of course, the sex chakra is missing. Everyone knows why, because if you know where that is and you tickle that one, you can uh, <laughs> cause a lot of fun uh, in people. So, uh, so obviously, that chakra can be severely misused. And one of the things in the sex defense is said is there's a thought form called um, dominating. What was the thought form called? You just read the book, right? Yeah, the dominating. No, it's not called dominating. Uh, it is is dominating. Anyway, something thought form which is used either for sexual gains or for uh, financial gains, right? Correct. So uh, this is if you know uh, you can use the thought form, but if you know where the source chakra is, that would be much more easier. All right. N and number two, uh, the main uh, the, the the solar plex is missing because the solar plexus was a um, secret in uh, martial arts because it controls uh, one of the uh, important parts of your body called the diaphragm. Uh, and your lungs can only move because your diaphragm ex moves down and up. The lungs do not have the capability of uh, expanding and contracting. It is the diaphragm that helps it expand and contract. So in martial arts, you have certain techniques, like you have the, you've heard of the crane and the snake, uh, all these techniques drunken master kind of moves and Jackie, what, Chan. Jackie Chan and what they do actually is according to Master Cho when he was telling us this he says you know if you have this the prana is focused you hit the solar plexus area when you hit the solar plexus area they project chi with that and it's usually probably something corresponding to the, the other uh, deeper shades of blue and this has a constricting or paralyzing effect on the diaphragm 
And even when you are not projecting any color, even in several portions of the advanced panic killing book and also basic, Master Choi said, be careful uh, uh, while energizing the solar plexus because it might cause breathing difficulty or it might cause uh, patient uh, discomfort. All right, uh, enslaving thought. It's called the enslaving, Enslave. not dominating. <laughs> so, Sorry. But it's, um, it has something to do with Similar. That. So, you know, you have the, um, you have this, so, so when you hit it, according to Master Chua, the, the diaphragm gets paralyzed and the person cannot breathe. And then when they do, when the person cannot breathe, for one second, his guard is down and they follow up with a series of attacks. So obviously, uh, <laughs> they don't want you to know about the diaphragm. Secondly, in yoga, this is a very, this is called the clearing house. Uh, and uh, in higher yoga, this is a very important chakra to, it's like, it's as important as a bank. You know, you need it, all the lower energies has to pass through the solar plexus to go up. And all the higher energies has to pass through the solar plexus to go down. So it's a very, very important chakra and it controls several organs. So if you know about that, you can create serious damage if you misuse it. Uh, number three, the Ming Min. The Ming Min, obviously, because you can just play around with someone's blood pressure if you know about that. And the Ming Min is your logistics department. You know, you have production, you have uh, delivery, logistics, and then you have, uh, you have sales and you have uh, logistics. The logistics, the, the Ming Min is the one that distributes everything. And without it, if you constrict it, uh, the prana is almost trapped in your, uh, uh, is reduced in your body and your body, uh, your chakra is actually, I'm not sure, but it starts to shut down. Because um, if, if I remember correctly in Peru uh, or in higher altitude, uh, the effect on high altitude on the chakras is that the chakras start to shut down. And even if you keep energizing it, nothing happens, all right? So the locals chew this leaf called coca leaf, uh, from where you get cocaine on coca leaf. It's a diuretic, so it expands the min min. The ming min becomes big, the prana starts to circulate more, the chakra starts to activate more. And I'm not sure about this, Master Chua just explained this once because he had the experience only one time. So he was talking to us about it. And so that's what happens. So that shows you how powerful the ming min chakra is. All right. That's why for people who have cocaine, they, it, you take tons of uh, coca leaf to make that few grams of cocaine. And the effect on the Ming Min is really, really, uh, you know, very, very uh, obviously deb debilitating. If one is um, activating it so much, imagine what um, the whole tons of leaves would do. And that's why it creates such a surge of energy in your body that you have cracks and holes because the body chakras cannot handle that much energy and it's dirty. That's why people who do all these things have a lot of energy. They do push-ups, they, they dance, they jump, and they have a lot of energy. Because it's technically a, um, a what do you call, mega-sized master healing techniques, which if you're healing a cocaine addict and they're capable, you can actually produce the energetic impact so they don't have that much withdrawal symptoms. Anyway, let's not go into that. Um, um, that, that. That shows how Ming Min. Now, forehead is the last chakra that's secret because the forehead is like the Ming Min for your divine energy. <laughs> It controls the amount of divine energy coming into your system. And also, it's, it, it's a very, very sensitive chakra in, in the essence that um, we cannot talk about <laughs> <laughs> yet. Okay, but even in the higher levels of Arhatic, one, two, three, and all, you do not, you might be activating chakras in level one, but we don't activate the forehead and the spleen. These are, these are chakras that uh, can create uh, too much energy coming into your body, which can create severe problem in your body. Yeah. Right. And interestingly, remember, that's the chakra that controls the nervous system. Hmm. Yeah. Too much of it is also not good. All right. And with that, the chapter is finished. Yes. We have five minutes. We can go to the next one. Should we want to take questions? I want to finish. <laughs> We're supposed to start off with a spleen. So just to see that we just started about it, uh, let me just add a couple of things and then we'll go into your question. So uh, the spleen chakra, as you and I know, is divided into six parts and therefore it has six uh, spokes. And uh, so it talks about um, this particular chakra that actually glows, uh, you know, beautifully. And it's now also we're in chapter four, just to let you know. Yeah, we're just going to chapter four. Very, very briefly, we'll, we'll come back to it on Friday, I guess. Uh, so if you look at it, it's also the center of beauty in Kabbalah. It's, it's, a, it's an amazing uh, center. So as we know in pranic healing, and as it's mentioned here, it says, what is the function of this particular chakra? What does it do from the atmosphere? Now we're talking about the other prana, yeah? The vitality clock. Sorry, last thing. I have no idea why the spleen is called Swadhisthana. That's supposed to be the sex chakra, according to Master Choa. Yeah. And I googled it and I checked. Um, uh, that is true. It is called Swadhisthana. I used to remember it because you have to understand my body was very young when I learned this. So Swadhisth means tasty and tasty oh my God. sex. Okay. This is oh, recorded also. Anyway, 
So I think that's why I remembered it. Anyway, at least I said something better. Okay, All fine. Right, okay. But the prana is called Split the prana chakra. chakra. It's called the prana chakra. Actually, I don't know why. <laughs> People uh, are disintegrating. Sorry, I'm sorry. Don't leave. Don't leave this. <laughs> I'll not okay. do anything to the swadhisthana. <laughs> spleen chakra. <laughs> We're talking about the spleen chakra. And so, what does it do? Uh, interestingly, it 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 does uh, work with the digestive system, but not with the physical digestive system. What does it do? It actually absorbs the vitality globules that we've been talking about. Yes, absorbs that prana, and then what does it do? It digests it, which means it starts to break it down. And remember, it has uh, seven different types of prana in it. And so it says here that it, uh, here it uses the word disintegrating, but I think we just call yeah. it dis, uh, digesting. I think that's a better word. So it digests the, word, digests the prana, distributes the prana. Now they're going to call the prana here atom, but I'm just going to call it prana to make it very simple, uh, which is charged uh, with what we spoke about earlier, all that amazing um, energy. Now from that, what does it do? It takes this uh, vitality globule that it has uh, drawn in, draws it into the center of the chakra. And from there, it breaks this into seven components. So the center being one and then the six around. That's a total of uh, seven. Yes, each atom is charged with uh, seven variety of prana. And these atoms are then caught up in the rotating, you know, that, that force that uh, Amit was talking about and spun around um, the chakra. Now, the seven different kinds of prana are colored here, a little different from prana healing, but uh, let's just look at it. It's violet, blue, green, orange, and then there are two shades of red. There's the dark red and there's the rosy red, all right? And so it is observed that when the division happens, yes, uh, when this is, uh, of course, it's very different from what we understand with Vidgyor from uh, the rainbow. And it's, they say it's very similar to what they see in the higher levels of the other bodies that we have. Now, none of us are clever, and so again, we can't validate. We just take it as temporary truth. However, it says the indigo color, which comes in Vidgyor, that color is basically divided between violet and blue. Yes, so here it mentions that there is violet, but the violet is split between the violet and, and the blue. And the red spectrum, again, is split here into dark red and rosy red. So just to um, add here, when we look at the six, um, six colors, right? Let's just split that colors based on what they say. Now, the most important is the central one. Yes. Now, the central atom or the central prana in the vitality globule, according to them, is the rose red. And the rose red is very vital because once it's absorbed, it is absorbed basically to circulate through the entire nervous system. So if you have more of this rose red prana within the nervous system, it stays healthy, all right? So let's just remember that that's the most important. It is also the same atom that we were talking about earlier that attracts those six around it. And so they call this, um, this, this is clearly associated with life of the nervous system. And uh, it is this variety of prana which one man can give to another, right? So out of those. Now coming back to the others, what is left is basically the division. And so we'll just look quickly at that. There's so much stuff. Uh, <laughs> I'm just going to go very quickly and then we'll, we'll split into it later, but just for you to have an understanding. And so when you look at it, so you have the rosy red. Now, where are the other colors go going? So the dark red combines with the orange and heads towards the base of the spine, towards the center there, to the Muladhara Chakra. All right. Now, uh, the next color which goes in combination is that violet and blue. That moves towards your throat. Okay, and so violet and blue goes there. So you have two combinations. And then you have the green that moves towards the navel more or less. Yeah, and then they say the yellow goes towards the heart center in this case. But remember, the central one goes towards the nervous system, which is very essential based on what we talk about. Coming from the astral, Inclu interestingly, rose red is also pinkish, yeah? And that is another color that usually comes from the astral. So it's interesting connection between what we know in, in what Master Chos talks about, the pink prana, the rose red prana in the vitality globule, and uh, the interesting thing about the nervous system that also comes from the astral body. And it's very crucial towards information that we seek on, on our skin, 
through our eyes, you know, for the sense organs, remember the brain, to then translate that information and then transmit that information into the astral or mental body to make sense of it and vice versa information from that to come out. So that's a very small, quick spleen chakra. <laughs> I will be talking on a more technical perspective uh, in the next session on what is happening uh, and how these uh, manifest. Yes, no, we'll go more into detail, but I, I just thought I'll just give you the crux of it and then we'll go more into details. All right, so we'll take your questions before we end the session. Uh, okay, okay, so we finish, finish all the, the yes. What does the fourth dimension refer to? Uh, I think it's in Doctor Strange again. Um, <laughs> Shri Ram. I'm just joking. <laughs> um, <laughs> you see, I'm, I'm going, to, there are certain things that I think our brain cannot comprehend more than three. <laughs> so it, if we cannot even comprehend it, how do I explain it? You know? Uh, I think it's like Master Chow says, you can't explain. Um, color to a blind person. Okay, or or to an ant. Yeah. Ah, ah, that. Yeah, that that a knowledge to an I'll answer. give you guys that talk one time. The one yeah, yeah. that I got. <laughs> it's like a mosquito trying to read a spreadsheet. <laughs> uh, okay, you IT guys. Okay, it's also uh, because James made lots of experiments upon himself. Um, it's also said that what we are, what we eat. So our physical body and therefore our ethnic body have defensive influence on our emotions and therefore our thoughts, psychosomatic. I've heard that Mang Mike had stroke, his body was paralyzed on one side, but he was a great caloric help. Yeah, so that's what I'm sure, trying to tell you. Uh, that's how they mean etheric and morals. Uh, Mang Mike was very read too, very loving. Um, yes, that happens with me very often, though I eat in veg restaurants. <laughs> yes, but the uh, thoughts in that is non veg. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned that the uh, person has been, had been doing miraculous healings even if they were physical body not clean. So what do you mean that miracle actually done via the use of astral high chakras? I feel like the healers that they are also used for making healing. Uh, not really. In the high levels, uh, you just bring down electric violet and there's a certain way of physicalizing the electric violet. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> You don't, you cannot <laughs> understand the, uh, the, the mechanism, but we have seen this many often. If you read the lives of many saints, they were bedridden and they're doing uh, miracles, you know, and they're not healing themselves. So you say, how come this person can heal all these people and they cannot heal their own body? Because their body is too damaged. They, according to Master Chua, they did not convert their body into a new wine bag. And then he says, including me. <laughs> so. And also the law of karma that manifests for them. Good. Yeah. More of the time, it's the law of nature. <laughs> That's what he told me. He's like, it doesn't matter if you're an arhat or not. The, no, uh, the law of nature does not care. <laughs> Correct. And that's why in this school, Master emphasizes a lot of purification, a lot of exercise, yeah. which sometimes we all uh, get lazy to do. But that's really the yeah. reason. Because yeah. he says you can't just have upper, big, huge, healthy chakras and very weak, lower chakras. It's not compatible. Yeah. We've seen that so many times. I, I remember I, uh, in 2000, what, when I just moved to India, uh, Sumi, would, I think you came and you bought, got some oils or something and took it to one of uh, her colleagues to put on to her husband because uh, he was almost bedridden after the retreat. He had got so much blessing. Uh, and then I think Master Chua had to heal and I think he yes. removed the energy in the end, right? Yeah. He, uh, he, he was someone who was so devoted to uh, reading Master Chua's book, ex especially Existence of God. He would do it every day, but no exercise. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that kind of caused so much congestion. And uh, uh, mutton biryani. Yes, and he loves his uh, <laughs> local biryani there and he would love to eat his mutton biryani. So he does all this, um, I mean, with a lot of devotion. And I think that's why Master Chua took care of him and did healing for him. I don't think he did healing. He just, he says all the energy expel out because his body can't handle it anymore. So yeah, he had to remove. Anyway, um, when we do healing based on the psychological function of chakras, if we incorporate astral it's all interpenetrating. That's why you use electric violet. Master Cho has not taught you the mechanism behind uh, psychotherapy. He has just taught you the uh, functionality of it and the components of it, but not the mechanism and the, the, the stuff of it. Great. Can we say analysis of chakra? Yeah, if you're talking about chapter three. While we, the soul, travel to higher bodies while sleeping, do we use chakras of that particular plane? Uh, if etheric and astral bodies have web in between, how does our soul cross all these layers? And Because the web, if you remember from uh, psychotherapy, is intelligent. 
it, it filters, it, it, it allows, uh, it just uh, protects you from uh, negative uh, energies. Positive emotions go through. Uh, there's no issue. That's why you can heal them. Otherwise, you can't even heal them. All right. Um, now, when you're sleeping, yes, you move into your astral body with your astral chakras. But the, what, is, what is very interesting is that um, you cannot move. If, if you have a lot of uh, stress or emotional energies, right? You, you have a project and you're continuously thinking about your project. What Master Chua calls this is you call this inner noises. All right. You call this inner noises. And this actually clogs all these astral centers. And you cannot function in the astral world just like you cannot function in the physical world if all your etheric chakras are clogged. So all your astral chakras are clogged and what is happening is you see like, it's like having a, according to Master, a dirty windshield and all you're seeing is your repeated thoughts and emotion that you've generated through the day. And so basically sometimes when you dream, you don't really go anywhere. You just think about the same thing you've been doing. Uh, that's especially common in uh, if you're playing a video game for excessive time. <laughs> you know, you'll see the video game in your sleep. When you close your eyes, you're like, okay, I think this is excessive now. <laughs> or, or if you've seen a really bad uh, movie. Or you uh, binge you watch scaring. Netflix yeah. for oh. some time. That has happened to me several oh, times. Now, I just know my friend who would watch these scary movies around Halloween. And she always gets scared. And I keep telling her, I don't understand you. Why would you want to watch the movie and then get scared and have these bad dreams? But she will still watch. That is because the astral body has consciousness. <laughs> yes, And they, want, they, they feed on this. <laughs> they enjoy it. They that's love true. it. That's why if you look at relationship, they always have intense fight. And then they have intense sex. And then after some time, intense fight again. And then they have uh, intense sex. Yeah, <laughs> that's then, what Master says. Yeah. They, the, the astral body loves anyway, that. We won't go into do it. This is the ethnic double. Uh, coming from inside, moving anti-clockwise. No, both directions. Anyway, what about the forehead? We spoke about that. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, karate kid, yes. <laughs> Why boundaries? Someone can misuse. It's not boundaries. What boundaries? Who no, boundaries? we were talking about that boundary. Remember that word? Mm. Contimate. Yeah. Contour. Uh, then how was I remember the sex check? Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Naughty Amit? Okay, yes. Of very course. naughty, very naughty. <laughs> Not naughty. It means, it means sorry. Uh, okay. Uh, all right. So, is Akashic Records in the fifth dimension? Uh, it depends what type of Akashic Records you're referring to. And I shall leave it at that. <laughs> if each prana has seven different colors, then when digestion happens, they are broken into individual colors. And those respective colors... Uh, yeah, you learn it in the next chapter, Spleen. We'll, we'll talk about it. it. I'll, I'll, we'll talk more about it. Pink prana controls the nervous system. Why would Master not include that in the protocols? Uh, pink is an et, uh, astral color. Yeah. Uh, and as such, you can uh, usually produce it from the heart. Uh, for example, we tried an experiment with Master and we were uh, focusing on the basic and projecting pink. Only light whitish red came out because it's not... Uh, anyway... We don't talk. Yeah, poke sorry, should be avoided, but what about that? medicines that contain gelatin? Uh, poke should not be avoided. I'm talking about saints. Uh, depending on how much spiritual energy you've come in, poke is perfectly fine and uh, extremely delicious for some people. Um, so with reference to pink prana, uh, there are two uh, places where Master Chua mentions this. One is when you do psychic self-defense, we do use pink uh, for the shield. And secondly, when we talk about blessing people, he says, bless from your bless the person right from your palm from the heart visualize pinkish energy and from the crown uh, gold in the end it actually becomes pinkish gold prana with physical permanency it has a design as the chakra develops does that update the physical permanency does physical permanency uh, to rotate uh, the physical permanency is made of spirally if you remember uh, and it's um, always uh, emanating because this, the energy coming out of it does not stop if it stops you're dead uh, and uh, does that update the physical permanency of? <laughs> How do you think oh, your development you take with you? <clears throat> you remember, Master, you know, there's a yogic thing, and I mean, Master Chua said it uh, what you do and your de development in the inner world and all that stuff, um, and your spiritual growth you take with you. So, how do you take it with you? You need backup hard drive, you need hard drives to upload the data. So where are those? So you know what I'm talking about. Like one time, <clears throat> this was level three, Arhatic, where you build the golden body. And uh, someone asked Master a very straightforward question. He was talking about how normally you, it takes 50 years to develop the golden body. And uh, with Arhatic practice level three, with the new techniques and the updated version, it takes only 
Uh, so there's the older version that's 50 years old. Then there's the Hatha Yoga version, which we don't talk about, which is 20 to 20, 20 to 30 years. And then the newest version is the one, at least that we know, is the level three version where you develop it in eight to 10 years, uh, uh, you know, uh, substantially. And there are different levels of gold. There's 18 carat, 24 carat, 22 carat. <laughs> I'm not, it's not really like that. It's just, I'm just giving you an analogy, quality okay? Uh, the quality of gold and changes, quantity. right? So, uh, what, someone asked a question because gold is an etheric col color. Now, I'm not going to go into it because then you'll ask me now, oh, so how does that uh, happen, you know, with the, you know, whole concept of the etheric body and all that stuff. But gold is an etheric color. So, so someone asked Master, so Master, what happens to all the gold that you produce uh, when you die? He's like, ah, the body's dead. So the gold is gone. He's like, ah, <laughs> seriously. <laughs> then he just kept quiet for some time. He's like, ah, but the technology of how to develop the golden body stays with the soul. So when you come next time, you already have partially or almost golden body or something like that. And by the way, the karma also comes that way. When you have karma to work out, apart from when you're born with that certain extent, you're evolving, you have karma to work out and there's physical karma to work out. The coding is the message is sent from the higher soul down through the uh, life seed, changes the design or bl uh, blueprint in the physical permanent seed and that part start to have problem. That's why it's very annoying or very difficult to heal karmic case. You have to use a lot of mercy. And chakras are limited to etheric body or is it in the astral? Of course, but the different chakras, it's in the other bodies. Master called chakra as beings and in basic book, it was stated that chakras are their own consciousness. What are they actually are? This is what you call the not angelic beings to help our soul. This is what you call the lower self. Um, I spoke about this, I think, in chapter one. I think so. I spoke about this lower self for a bit, but I'll just wait for some time because I think he will address it. I'm, I'm keen to know how the author goes about it and then we'll talk about it, okay? Um, all right. I'm not able to... Love, okay, this is... Uh, no, you're not... Uh, uh, if you're not able to love, you're not a bad person. You're just mentally maybe a little bit too developed. So I would uh, highly recommend meditation on Twin Hearts. Uh, on a regular basis, a regular uh, basis. to open up the heart and develop the love aspect in you. Otherwise, yeah. yeah. So maybe the light, the divine light aspect, which is the intelligence, the mental, uh, is quite strong and you need to learn to balance it out. Even if you're in a female body, you need to learn to balance it out with love, uh, which is uh, divine love that we're talking about, manifesting. And maybe your lessons are the people around you. It could be family, it could be friends. Do Arhatic yogis at the level, uh, in reincarnate at the level of spirituality that we reach in this life? Of course. Now the question is, how does it do that? I don't know whether it's addressed in this book. We shall see. All right. Of course, you use your seeds. Uh, and uh, uh, however, the Antakarna and the uh, Kundalini cannot be uh, come in at the stage that you develop because you have a new body. And Kundalini is always fresh and, you know, new in everybody. Uh, so, but it, the technology, since the technology is there, it already starts even without you doing yogic practice. That's why at a very young age, some people start feeling bubbling in their spine, even when they're like eight, nine, and they're like, what is this good, goody feeling in my back? Uh, uh, that means you were a yogi before and it's just happening automatically because the divine energy is strong. That's it. We're done. Sorry, one person had put their hand up. They raised their hand. I was just waiting no to more. get now there. You go to the <laughs> I don't know where he's gone. I okay. thought it was a... Don't see it. All right. So shall we end? All right. Um, whoever that person is. Oh, there he is. Oh. Rendra. Yes, you can ask your quest. Oh. I thought it... You have to ask to unmute. Yeah, We're I asking am. asking you. <laughs> Can you unmute, uh, Virendra? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Uh, actually, it was not a question. I, uh, it was something uh, I just wanted to know. Has it uh, these tantrics also? Okay. Uh, they also do, uh, you know, a, a sort of healing, probably a magic, uh, which is black magic. Whereas we do healings, which is pure, uh, like with the. Uh, consciousness that uh, yes we have a karma to repay for it like if we do something wrong so when they are doing such things even their um, uh, we can say astral body or etheric body might be developed that is why they are able to do such things mm -hmm. but because they are not morally good so how it is 
okay one karma is one thing but how is going to affect them means uh, whether their chakras will be further shrinking or uh, is that they are not able to uh, prolong that for a, you know uh, this uh, magic which they are doing doing like there is different technology involved, but they do not escape the law of karma. I'm not sure what is your question, uh, but uh, most of them don't last over 40s and 45s. Their body dies uh, fairly quickly, by the way. Correct. And one of the things that we asked Master Cho, what happens to them? And he says, like uh, Amit mentioned, the law of karma does catch up. So even if it's not in that lifetime, in another lifetime. So he says sometimes uh, in the mental asylum or the mental institution, when you find certain people, Yes, not all of them. Please don't, you know, <laughs> say that everyone there is because of this. Some of them who are there are purely because of the deeds that they um, did in a previous lifetime as black magicians. And so you notice that this lifetime, um, they cannot enjoy anything physical, um, nothing astral. They don't even have emotions. Mentally, they cannot learn. Spiritually, they cannot grow. So on all levels, they are literally stunted this whole lifetime. So it catches up because of all the harm they've done to other people on the physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual level. This lifetime, there is no growth. That's one of the things that Master Joe mentioned. Yeah. And there's always people. There are people as strong as uh, Paramahamsa's level of development. There are, on the other side, very powerful beings. But the way it works is very different, and we don't talk about that. Yeah. It doesn't have to do with us. The yes. point is, uh, just get your body strong and they don't affect you. Usually, if you have a 10-meter aura and somebody has an 8-inch aura, uh, what is the power of the thought form? It will, not, it will not really affect you. Don't worry about it. Yeah. That's why we always invoke for divine protection. All right, so, so we're going to end. Uh, can you close your eyes, connect down to your palate? Uh, no, people with psychological problems in childhood don't have bad karma. <laughs> That's uh, not the prayer. <laughs> uh, it's not about that. It could be negative program and they were small. It could be uh, several, several factors. Right? All right. Okay. To the Supreme Being, the Divine Father, Divine Mother, to our beloved and respected teacher, Grand Master Chokok, Sri Lord Mahakaraji Mele, to all the great teachers and the great beings and masters of theosophy, to the angels and beings of communication and our respective Wi-Fi, thank you for your great, great blessings. Thank you for all the clarity, understanding, of all these priceless teachings, we ask you to continue to help us absorb and assimilate it and become better divine instruments in your service. We thank you in full free. Atma Namaste, everybody. Have thank a wonderful you. dinner. Till we see you on Friday, we will stop earlier than today. Yes, yeah? we'll stop it. Looks yeah. like Wednesday is always longer. <laughs> yeah, sorry. And, and Friday will become shorter. Anyways, thank you so much. Atma Namaste. Atma Namaste. Yeah. Bye. Be safe. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you.